Welcome to speed dating at UC Davis. Unlike my past speed dating videos, this video is actually flipped. So we have three guys, one girl, Rhea, and Rhea will be speed dating the three guys. There will be three rounds, uh, random topics, 36 questions that lead to love, and deep questions. And at the end of the video, Rhea will choose one of the guys that she has speed dated. Alright, so we're going to start off with individual intros. So each person is going to share their name, where they're from, their major, um, and their passions or interests. Hello everybody, my name is Kenneth. I'm from Seattle, Washington. I'm here at UC Davis. I'm a third year studying managerial economics, minoring in computer science. And some of my passions are golfing, traveling, skiing, snowboarding, pretty much anything outdoors. Hey all, I'm Jalen. I'm a second year at UC Davis studying statistics. I'm from San Francisco, California, and some of my interests are cooking and football. Hello, my name is Ian. I am a first year data science major. I'm from Saigon, Vietnam. Uh, some of my passion includes going out with friends, badminton, cooking, mostly outdoor stuff. Uh, I'm very social, so all the things I do is mostly like with a lot of friends around. Hi, my name is Rhea. I'm from Palo Alto and I'm currently a computer science major, second year. And I love film and philosophy. So I actually have a blog where I do a lot of film analysis that I really keep up with recently at least. But yeah, I guess that would be my biggest passion at the moment. I am Jalen. Hello, my name is Rhea. My name is Kenneth. Nice to meet you. I'm Rhea. Hi, my name is Rhea. Oh, my name is Ian. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. The first topic is first dates. So you guys can kind of discuss that topic. You can go first. First dates? I don't really have an answer, but like I could like narrow it down, you know? Mm -hmm. Your guys' topic is love language. Mm. Do you want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Okay. So, I would say my favorite love language is just like the act of, I guess, support mm. and being there for somebody when mm -hmm. they need it the most. Okay, so, your guys' topic is uh, red flags and green flags. Cool. Mm. Feel free to go first. I, um, I don't know much about green mm -hmm. flags, but I've met a lot of red flags. Mm -hmm. Mostly like, tend to be very controlling mm -hmm. or uh, ask for a lot of me time. You know how like a lot of people go like to movies? Yeah. I feel like that's not as good of a first date because mm -hmm. you're not really like, spending time together. You're more like just watching a screen and there's better ways to get to know each mm -hmm. other. So I would say generally like support, but also having like boundaries to, mm -hmm. um, I guess like be independent as well. Cause, mm -hmm. like, Everybody needs space, so yeah, I think definitely. having space and then also, but being there for support when they need it. Mm -hmm. I guess green flags wise, like, uh, be emotionally available mm -hmm. or just, you know, just enjoy hanging out, mm -hmm. enjoy each other's company. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Fair enough. I think my um, favorite place for a first date is definitely like the ocean side. I love driving places. So it's like a nice time to just chill and talk about stuff, get to know okay. each other a little bit better. But I do agree with the movie thing. It feels more or less just like you're sitting next to each other and there's not really any conversation. Mm. But yeah. My, my preferred love language, at least on the top, is definitely physical touch. And second comes words of affirmation. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm super insecure, but obviously everyone feels very insecure at certain points in time. So it's good to have that as like a fa fundamental thing in your relationship, yeah. Uh, my biggest red flag is also the tendency to be extremely controlling of my time specifically. It's like asking too much of my time. Um, we are students after all, so you need to know your priorities straight. And for me, obviously school stands first before anything else. Uh -huh. And again, I agree, green flag, um, being emotionally available is very important if you're willing to commit to a relationship, yeah. so yeah. If you knew that in one year you would die suddenly, what would you change anything about the way you are <clears throat> now living? Why? <laughs> I'll probably cut back on partying. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. or either I just like go all out. You know, mm. it's, it's one year, I might just like live to my fullest. 
probably try to drop out of school, yeah, go back yeah. to Vietnam, visit my mom. Oh, no. oh yeah. nice. <laughs> um, I have a similar answer. I'm from India, so all my family lives there. I would definitely make sure to visit them. I haven't seen them in like four years. How close and warm is your family? Do you feel your childhood was happier than most other people's? Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> I guess I could go first. Uh, I feel like maybe my parents could have been more in it, but I understand why like they were not as close and warm because like mm -hmm. they have to like all, like provide mm. for us and do they both work yeah they, they yeah. both work and like growing like realizing that now like i'm super grateful for that and mm -hmm. um i wouldn't change it because they, they're like really sacrificing for me mm -hmm. now that i'm in college they like they call me so frequently and like mm -hmm. and that's super important too and like i'm really grateful for that it's yeah. very cool um for my childhood, I think <laughs> I had a pretty decent childhood. <laughs> That's like such a weird way to put it, but um, I wish my dad was a little bit warmer to me. I don't know, it's something with like Asian dads I've noticed, they tend to be a lot colder towards That's you. That's relatable. Yeah, I think it was also because I was the first child in the family and they were really literally just figuring out how to raise a child in the first place. But I think he's definitely a lot closer with my younger sister. So I do get jealous sometimes, but I think we're both working a little bit harder on that aspect of getting a little bit more emotionally close to one another. So that's nice, yeah. What roles do you love and affection play in your life? I feel like love is such a weird, like, there's so much that goes into it. The biggest form of love that I see is just support and being mm -hmm. there for somebody. My parents show me love in every way possible. My brother shows mm -hmm. me love. I try to show my family <clears throat> love whenever I can. I think you summarized it pretty well. Love is a very complex word and everyone has very individual definitions for it. I think I have a good idea of what love means to me. I think it's compromise, the ability to put your own feelings aside and look at something objectively, which is very hard in such an emotional-filled uh, relationship. And I really appreciate platonic love or romantic love. Uh, it plays a lot of importance in my life because I'm the kind of person that feeds off of it, basically. So that kind of support, and emotional or physical, is very important to me too, yeah. What is your greatest personal challenge and how did you overcome it? Mm. Would you like to go first? Yeah, sure, I'll go first. I um, guess my greatest personal challenge is, I'll answer like right now, it's dividing my time correctly between friends and school and family. Most of the time I just, and also my passions, it just feels like I'm stumped with work and I'm not very good at managing my time. I would love to get better at that. My biggest challenge that I've ever faced, um, I think it was like, I guess like a year ago, I've been playing, I used to play baseball my mm -hmm. entire life mm -hmm. and that was like my whole life growing up oh, basically. Nice. Yeah. And it was really all I cared about. And then yeah. I ended up getting hurt like my freshman year of college. Mm -hmm. And then I had to basically stop playing baseball just because like my injury was nagging me for pretty much multiple years. Mm -hmm. Um, so just kind of, I guess, making that decision to stop playing um, was probably the biggest challenge that I've ever faced in my life just because of how much effort that I used to have to put into it, how much effort I've put into it my whole life. So, I mean, like now that I look back on it, it's the mm. greatest decision I ever made. Yeah. But at the time, it, it was, was the very most... difficult. Exactly. I know because I played tennis for 14 years and I broke both of my ankles, mm -hmm. after which my ankles were like messed up. They still kind of are, I can't even run straight. But I had to make the decision to stop playing because I was in national levels and I was on, an, on a rise, but like it all just stopped out of nowhere. So yeah. it was pretty difficult. Like the toughest thing is to give up something that you love and something that you've yeah. worked your whole life for. So, I mean, it ends up working out for the better. I'm a firm believer in that, but I mean, yeah. at the time, it's just like such a brutal decision to mm -hmm. make. If there were no society, more social norms, and you genuinely didn't care at all about the judgment of other people, what would you spend the rest of your life doing? Hmm. That is Do so... Do you want to go for it? <laughs> um, well, for me, uh -huh. 
I well, is in America, it's not very much a societal norm, <clears throat> but in Vietnam, it's always like go to college, mm. grind, and get a good job. This might be like de deviate a bit, but it's not really societal pressure, but my family's pressure for it, like making me or keeping me stay to be in college and mm. finish my ed education. If I didn't have that, I'd probably drop out and do my own thing. Mm. Mostly like. Because I like creating stuff, teach myself how to code and make a website, or nice. even maybe uh, try to be a teacher. Oh, that that awesome. was that was one of my um, other dreams that I wanted to pursue. I wanted to pursue. It's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I would give a similar answer in the sense my family mm. has definitely pressured me quite a bit to go into the computer science field. And I mean, it wasn't surprising because in India, if you're an Indian kid, if you're a girl, you're either a doctor or a coder. <laughs> if you're a man, you're an engineer. You're just an engineer. <laughs> There's no other choice. It's engineer period. But um, if that wasn't the case, I, I mean, I understand. My parents are immigrants, mm -hmm. so obviously they want the best life for me. My dad's working at Tesla, and that to me is amazing. Like, he was an army officer for 23 years, came here, got a job at Tesla and stuff. But um, I think I realized I'm not exactly the kind of person who could sit on a desk for hours yeah. and code. That's just not me. I'm kind of like getting the degree just to satisfy my parents, earn money, and then do my own thing. Mm. And I realized that's also kind of unrealistic in a way, but one can hope. Yeah. <laughs> but if there were no expectations, I would definitely make films. Oh. I really enjoy filmmaking. I enjoy analyzing films and that's like one of my favorite pastimes. I just love writing stuff in general too. I'm a very art-centric person, mm -hmm. so it's really weird to see me in the computer science field, but yeah. It's like a little messed up though, whatever Yeah, it's, it's very about. messed up. That's why just we like joke the... about it. <laughs> Smile through the pain. Yeah. <laughs> How would you define happiness and success? Oh, I can go first. Yeah, you, you can go. Okay. Uh, well, happiness to me would, again, just be a good balance between my social life and work or school or whatever. I, I mean, I don't even know what it means to be happy. <laughs> That's going to sound like such a cliche answer. But I truly, I mean, I feel like I'm happy right now in general. Um, I also obviously have my days where I'm very, very not okay. But in general, overall, I think I'm pretty happy right now, and I like to just be with my friends, do schoolwork. It's a simple life at the moment, so I think just the simplistic things make me really happy. And in terms of success, uh, yeah, I don't know what would make me think I'm successful. Uh, the very token answer is just to say earning enough money and having like a decent livelihood and quality of life would make me feel successful. So right now, that will be my answer. <laughs> okay, so for happiness, I'd say is today, am I like satisfied with today? Mm. And tomorrow, am I going to be satisfied? To so it's like a day by day. Live in the moment. Yeah, yeah. and I know a lot, of, a lot of people are like, depressed and like stressed like mm -hmm. I'm very lucky that I don't really have that you don't really feel that yeah because like if I get depressed it's so weird I tell I tell my friends it's like I just go to bed and I wake up it's a new day it's like a fresh start it's a fresh start so today's today and like if yesterday was bad mm -hmm. like it's gone today's it's over gonna with. be a better day it's like new yeah. paper like fresh sheet and I can make it good nice that's a good way of dealing with yeah. that at least yeah um as for success it's can I fulfill my like purpose, like mm -hmm. what I want to do in life? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so whatever that purpose may be. Honest, like right now, mm -hmm. oh, I feel like I'm a workaholic. Maybe we're we're all workaholics here, but yeah. Uh, what I want to do is I want to do like biostatistics. Uh -huh. So like there's like a lot of like steps to do that. So I need to do like finish statistics and then get like grad like graduate degree mm -hmm. in biostatistics mm -hmm. and then what I really want dream job. Is like work at a pharmaceutical company nice. like yeah. J&J or Pfizer and uh -huh. that's so you have a goal that is mind. like yeah. my ambition in life that's and nice. I feel like if I hit that ambition mm -hmm. I'll be successful but then after the words I'll have another another goal in my that's life. really impressive I'm always jealous of people who know what they want to do <laughs> because I've never really had a very clear idea of that 
but I still do believe I'm pretty ambitious when it comes to things I do want to do. Like for example, pursuing my passion, I definitely put my mind to it and I'm very determined in that case, so mm. it's pretty cool. I guess I'm lucky in the sense where like what I want to work as is like something I'm really happy to Yeah, do. you're very happy about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that was awesome. Ray's going to make her choice and choose one of the guys. Cool. <laughs> go for it. Okay, go for it. <laughs> I hate to you. <laughs> just because I think we had the most conversation. I think it was more or less just because of the time. It was more or less just the moment that we were having there. Yeah, yeah so it was nice. Okay. Cool. Yay. No <laughs> All right, so we're going to end with some reflections from our participants. Thank you guys so much for coming. It was super fun. I love hosting these speed dating events. Um, and you guys were super well-spoken. Um, and yeah, thank you for sharing all of your reflections and like your stories and being authentic. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys had a fun time. Thank you guys so much. What are your guys' takeaways from this experience? Um, and how do you feel overall? I guess I'll go first. <laughs> um, I thought this experience was really fun. Um, I'll never turn down a chance to do something new and interesting. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time I've ever been behind a camera before in a YouTube video. So I think like to take that opportunity and just run with it and do something fun for once, <laughs> never turn it down. I thought the questions that were asked were deep questions that I'll probably never be asked. I feel like I don't know when I'll ever be asked a question like that again, so um, I really had a fun time, I guess, answering the questions as best as I could. Oh. Yeah, uh, I would say the same thing as him. It's, it's a really fun experience, and um, no, it's also really fun, nice meeting everyone and getting to know everyone and you know, trying to make new friends. Uh, well, I, I would really, this really makes me think that, yeah. I should never uh, turn down an, an opportunity to like, do something new. I could go. Um, honestly, before this, everyone was like, oh, we need one more guy. I'm like, oh, all right, I might do it. I'll flip like a heads or tails. Like if, if it gets heads, I'll come, but like I got work to do. But coming here, like it's uh, very unique because this chance isn't really like, it's very rare and it doesn't really come by really easily like that so it's cool that, to be here uh yeah i can hold it um it was pretty cool i didn't come here having any expectations at all i mean you basically stopped me <laughs> in the middle of the street <laughs> and you were like yo it's kind of weird but we need another girl and i was like this sounds a little bit sketchy but <laughs> it's all right <laughs> whatever and then you texted me i was like you know might as well go i don't really have anything else to do today <laughs> so <laughs> I don't really mind going there and I'm glad I came. It was it was pretty cool. Uh, again, I I haven't ever been in a video like a YouTube video either. So I don't know how awkward I'll come off. <laughs> in that. I was very conscious the entire time, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun.